Thank you very much for, for talking with me this morning, Dick. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about is the self. I have heard what you've already said uh, in, in a, ver- you know, a variety of places about the self, and I, and I get that. I mean, if you could just very briefly recap how you see the self or what the self is, and then I can go from there with my questions, if that's all right. Sure. Um, you know, my view of it has evolved over the years that I've been doing this. At first, you know, at first I couldn't believe it because I'd been trained like so many of us to believe that for people to have those C word qualities uh, within them, they had to have had a certain kind of parenting in their childhood. And this was popping out of people who had had horrible childhoods and had no business, according to attachment theory, having any of that. So after I got over my astonishment at that, I started to think maybe, you know, just like our bodies know how to heal themselves, like if you cut your arm, your body immediately goes into action to change, to heal that. Maybe the self thing is the, the emotional equivalent that that it's the place in us where we know how to heal ourselves emotionally, which it is. And but the degree to which it can't be damaged and there were just a number of observations about it that didn't allow that to really work ultimately, like the evolutionary view of that. Uh, And I, I just had to start to look at various spiritual traditions, even though I wasn't at all a spiritual, well, I shouldn't say that. I wasn't in any religion, and I was agnostic, I would say, at best. Uh, but I had some students who who were uh, both Christians and Buddhists, and they started to say, well, maybe this is like Buddha nature, or maybe this is like the soul, or... Maybe this is like Atman. And so I began to explore all that. And indeed, it turns out that uh, every spiritual tradition virtually has a word for it. And often a lot of their practices are designed to access it. And so that's where I've landed with it, that it is a more spiritual uh, essence within us. And uh, my, my thinking now is that like quantum physics talks about photons being both a particle and a wave, that there's a wave state of self that isn't personal, that's, that's uh, much more transpersonal. And then each of us have a particle of that within us. Uh, and that, that that particle is really the same as the wave, except that it's got boundaries and makes, you know, in our bodies, we feel separate from each other much more. But that's why it has all these healing qualities. And and so uh, anyway, that's a short version of how I've come to see the self. Yeah. It's um, when you when you first started talking about it, it made me think of life force as a life sort of a, an, an, an unstoppable element shall we say you know we can't stop the body healing us the body could avoid healing us or not be very good at it for whatever health reasons or ill health reasons but you you can't stop the force of what you're calling the self from being a part of a person if the other stuff gets out of the way right i mean you know people's parts can stop self from from acting so that's that's never been clear to me how that's possible given the power of self but uh yeah it can be thwarted very by many different parts and that's a lot of what ifas is about is to help those parts see they need to allow it to to function yeah and i think that is the the beautiful appeal of it for many people because they probably at whatever level be it conscious or subconscious uh, life force that they're not even in connection with, but they can't help but have, they are driven. You know, we're going to use this language to roughly estimate what's going on, but they're driven towards the self. 
you could you could make an analogy with uh, the love you know we fall in love and this is it from the hindu tradition we fall in love with ourselves because in the other we see the self that we recognize in ourselves if you sort of yeah um well i suppose you know the, the, my my interest to talk to you started in the first place because if the self is so great and i agree with you that it is um you know, there's C words just as a, as, a, as a kickoff. They are super things. If you can have those and channel those, you're in a good situation. If it's such a good thing, and if we have it, why on earth would our parts choose to get in the way and, 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 and not be self-led? Have you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I've asked the parts that many times. Huh. And what they say is we don't trust self because... Self didn't protect us when we were young, and so, and that's been true. I mean, I've had to work to where we access self, we talk to a part, the part turns its back and says, I don't trust you, you abandoned us, and you locked me up, and self has to apologize. And typically we'll say some version of, you know, when, I, when that all happened, I didn't have the body to protect you. And because it's usually when a person's a child and is overwhelmed by whoever's hurting them. And I'm really sorry that I couldn't. And so we have to make kind of repair to begin the, the process of having, this is this, the second goal of IFS is to, is to have the parts trust, restore their trust in self again. And sometimes a, a repair is necessary for that. That, that juxtaposition of, I'm not sure juxtaposition is the right word, but the the role of trust in, in a human life is, is so fundamental. I mean, I see this or I've seen this in alternative education and how trust allows learning to occur in the most oh. beautiful, natural way. Um, but there's a connection, isn't there, between trust and love. And mm -hmm. I wonder what you think about the, shall we call it the weakness of love? Or I'm going to put it in another way, which is that, Lots of religions talk about God playing with us or that this life is some kind of game uh, or it's got, they call it God's play. So for instance, Hinduism talks about God's play or the drama of existence. The fact that we're here, you've said it yourself. Uh, I read it recently, I think about lessons. You, you talked about what, you know, why are we here? What's the purpose of life, et cetera. It's to learn lessons. So you could see that as a kind of a God play or the play of God's love in our life that we enter into dramas, we, we face difficulties in order to learn and to grow, right? To evolve, if you like, if you see that in a spiritual sense. And, and so in that sense, there, we could say that there's a sort of a, a God's play withholding of love. If love was there when self was weak, then everything would have been overcome and self would have led and everything would have been fine. But then there, perhaps there's a withdrawing of love or a, a passive kind of love that looks on as a witness to what drama we're going through in that we need the, we need the weakness. We need the parts to feel that they're not being supported so that we, I mean, um, uh, one of the Hindu um, uh, holy figures is, is, is called Swami Vivekananda. And he talks about love, um, life as a kind of a gym. So when we fall down and we have to get up, we've got to use the muscles to get up. So this, this kind of makes sense of why parts would feel let down by self. But on the other hand, you know, IFS is striving to increase self. So why, why do that if life is a game and it's a gym and parts having trouble is part of the fabric of existence? Why, why do what? Why try for more self? Well, I, you know, I've asked these questions and what has come back uh, is similar to what you're saying, that we're here to learn lessons. And uh, if self was all powerful and love was all powerful and we, we led that way through all our life, that there wouldn't be much to learn. And that instead we accumulate these burdens from uh, these extreme beliefs and emotions from traumas and attachment injuries and 
and from interactions with people. And that becomes our lesson plan is how to uh, unburden, how to release all of that. And in doing that, we have to interact with the parts that carry the burdens and, and show them love and help them trust it's safe to do that, to unburden and trust self again. So all of that, for me, is the lesson plan. That's why we're here. And if, if we can do that, if, if <laughs> many, many people start to do that in our culture and we can bring more of this wave state of self to this planet, it will change a lot of things. And that what's, that's what keeps me going. Uh, I'm very interested in ways to do it more collectively with lots of people at once. But like a stadium or something? Well, yes, you know, something like that. Mm. Uh, or online, you know, we can do it online as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that's what I, I'm learning is one of the goals and one of the goals of IFS, which is to bring more self, not just for individual healing, but for collective healing and the learning of lessons, which is, you know, and maybe in contrast to some religions, maybe even in contrast to Hinduism, where this reality is is thought to be a kind of playground that the drums and the poor and the uh, work is to be in that, that wave state all the time. Um, my take is that we enter the wave state in order to bring more of that to this planet and that our work is to to be embodied in this world so that uh, we can help other people unburden and ultimately mm -hmm. help the planet heal. So it's a bit different that way. Well, yeah, I mean, this this is uh, very similar to, uh, again, I mentioned Swami Vivekananda talking about the, in the Hindu tradition, reincarnation over and over until nobody is left. So it's that same idea of we don't escape into nirvana and disappear off into the heavens and, you know, leave everyone behind to get on with it. It's right. much more a sense of, come on, everyone come with us or let's go all together. Um, yeah, no parts or no people left behind. That's right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, there is that, th there's that sort of question which is unresolvable, but perhaps the self as an unstoppable force or life force that heals the body as an unstoppable force, even, you know, let's imagine that they have the same source um, or same nature. But it is stoppable. That's, that's the irony. I mean, parts can block access to self. Well, I think actually there's a contradiction there because it, it, you're saying the self is 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 untarnishable. So self is always there, always in the background, shall we say, always yeah, watching yeah. and understanding and knowing that these these difficult unself like experiences are going on or behaviors are happening. Yeah, although uh, you know you can you can have parts dominate to the point where self isn't that aware. It, it's out of the body and, and so on. But it's still the point being that once parts open space, the same self in everybody pops out and starts to go into leadership. But it can be it can be put into a kind of dormancy or or dissociated to the point where it can't function. And, well, uh, there's a question there about the nature of self. I mean, in my I've got a list of questions here and I I, I do wonder about the nature of self, and possibly this is outside of our ability in any way to think about it or answer it, because self could be ineffable, right? If that's its nature, that we can't really grasp it, we can't talk about it. It, it is in the realm of silence. So let's call it sacred silence. But then that would mean, you know, is, is it possible for, for a human being to say self wasn't there when a person is so, as you put it, dissociated or troubled, having extreme difficulty with burdened parts, that self does not seem to be present in any way, shape or form. Is it for us to claim that self isn't present? Again, I'm just reporting what I've been taught. So it isn't that self isn't doesn't exist anymore or isn't there. It's just that it's uh, covered over, blended and, and uh, taken out of the body and 
when that's the case, you know, the big self still exists, the wave state of self. But for a particular person, their access to this, this self is quite diminished. Well, you it's just... It's not that it went anywhere. It's just that it's it's um, impeded to the point where it can't often isn't even aware of what's going on. What you just said was very uh, interesting um, and key, possibly, where you said it's taken out of the body. Mm -hmm. um, well, where does it reside? If it's in our body, um, it's, it's again. There's the the wave state, the ocean, and then we have a drop of that ocean in us. And that drop can only uh, function and, and if, if there's room in us for it to be in, in our bodies. Is it possible for the link between the wave state, you know, that drop has a link, I imagine, to the wave state? Yeah, totally. Would it be possible for that drop to lose its its connectivity such that it's never able to reconnect? That would be against what you said as a title no. of the book, No Bad Parts. No, it isn't. that isn't possible. It right. can always reconnect. So it's just a case of quantity. Yeah, yeah. It's a case of how much access and, and how embodied it can be. And I'll give you an example. So... Uh, I did high dose ketamine some years ago with a guy named Bob Grant. And during that time, I totally left my body, had no connection to it, and was totally immersed in that wave state and it had no boundaries and just felt that oneness, that oceanic state for the whole 20 minutes. of, And, and during that time, myself had no awareness of what was happening in my body. And then after the, the medicine experience, and I started to come back, I slowly started to feel embodied a little bit, and then more and more as I came back. And also as I came back, I came to realize how difficult it is to be in these bodies because they do make you feel very separate from everybody in, a, in contrast to when you're in the wave state. So that's what I mean. I mean, I, I was really not around for my body during that time. I just left into the wave state. Um, right. So this, this, this thing about the self, I mean, what we're talking about, how dare we, shall we say? I mean, this, the self is bigger than us. Um, the self is a tremendous, you know, that's where I run into problems of, of a kind of, ineffable kind. I mean, I've researched silence, right? So as soon as I come up against that, 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 that lack of language, I know that there is a... Well, you know, I know that there's been that uh, idea about self, that it's ineffable, and if you try to talk about it, you're not really talking about it. But that's not been my experience at all. I mean, I talk about the eight Cs, I talk about the five Ps, I talk about... I talk about how it shows up. I don't know... Talking about what it is is a little trickier, and I do my best to report what I've been taught. And and I do want to say that none of this came out of my brain. It's uh, this is all from the research I've done with clients and asking asking the kinds of questions you're asking. Yeah, no, uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. A, a person, even a person who's uncovered some really useful ways to access self like you have um a person's not capable of, of saying or doing or amending anything to do with self are they uh, it is what it is it is there you've discovered that that's the case in your own language in your own uh, set of concepts and so on but you know us uh, talking about it here is not going to change a thing uh, I guess I guess the reason to have the conversation in the first place is because there seems to be something very positive about accessing parts, befriending parts, and going for the unburdening side of things in order to make people lighter and more accessible to self. Right. And so therefore it follows 
the were we to understand self, you know, because I did see that in the, the, the title of that book about the elusive self, and it is very elusive, frankly. I mean, parts are getting in the way all the time. Yeah, it's elusive in that sense. But the other, in addition to the healing of parts and transforming, um, this idea of self-leadership is is very powerful. And in addition to not being ineffable in terms of talking about it, you can actually uh, feel when it's in your body and when it's not yeah. in a very practical way. And that's yeah. a lot of what we teach in our training programs. Well, what does it feel like? So I have like five or six markers to tell if I'm in, in my body, if I'm in cell. And that those include, uh, is my heart open? And I can check real quickly and see if it is. Uh, do I have a big agenda? Am I really trying to convince you of something? Uh, I can check that really quickly. Do I, there's a kind of vibrating energy that runs through my body when I'm really in self. How much of that energy is there? And so on and so on. So, yeah, it's what we do in the trainings and, and in my workshops is like help people get triggered and feel what that's like to have a part take over. Feel what your body, what your muscles feel like, what your breathing is like, what your heart's like. Look through those eyes of a triggered part. Notice the impulses. Notice the thoughts. And then ask the part to separate. And when it separates, you start to access self, and it's a totally different feeling in your body that you can very, you know, clearly identify. And then as you go through your day, you just check how much of self is in your body. That becomes a practice. Mm, I've heard that, the daily practice. Mm -hmm. But it's the sort of thing that um, isn't really widely talked about. I mean, it, let, let's take religious people who are going for their whole sort of not not people who are looking through some sort of religious spiritual practice, as you've put it, to escape their parts, their their trauma, their burdens, and all of that stuff, uh, to try and uh, not bother with them. Okay, uh, and uh, and that's never going to work. They're going to have to do the self work to clear themselves out, shall we say? Um, you know, it works to a degree. I mean, people go through their whole lives um, meditating every day and feeling pretty good in general. Um, well, this is true. So it's not mandatory that you heal these parts. They'll, you know, they'll often affect your body somehow if you don't. But and, like physically, you know, with illnesses and things like that. Yeah, things like that. Or they'll screw your life up in other ways, but you can still make it through life without dealing with them. Yeah, but it's much better to not get ill. It's much better to deal with people in a decent way and deal with yourself, first of all, in a decent way. Care for yourself. Yeah. Um, so I, I just wonder why these concepts, particularly given religions, have already they're already on the case and they've been on the case for a long time, why these concepts are not more accessible and kind of practised as you know, for instance, we brush our teeth. Most people know that if you brush your teeth, your teeth will last longer. And that's a daily practice, morning and evening. Why aren't people checking in for some kind of self-leadership? It doesn't have to be your language or IFS as a community's language or anything. It could be any language you like. It's just the practice matters for a healthy, happy, safe, peaceful world. So why not so far is this commonplace? Well, you know, it, I, I think it's for, for some other traditions, it is fairly much a practice. And but the biggest reason to that is, you know, the title of my book, that most uh, religious traditions and also mo most of our culture doesn't believe there are no bad parts. And they believe that these things are negative emotions that that need to be uh, at best ignored. And, you know, there, I just did a podcast this week called um, The One You Feed. Do you know that parable? No. That there are 
there's a parable allegedly from Native Americans where uh, a boy is asking his father, um, you know, I have these emotions and I have these emotions and 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 these would be like uh, envy and avarice and blah blah and then these are these good ones and they're they're kind of in a battle in my in my mind and I'm I'm worried which ones are going to win and the father says the ones you feed mm. and so that's been the attitude and like the Dalai Lama's attitude is basically that and all kinds of traditions have that attitude about yeah. that these there are good and bad emotions there are good and bad thoughts and you should just focus on the positive and starve the negative and that's what I mean at best you ignore them at worst you fight with them or shame them or lock them away and so it's it's that misunderstanding of what these emotions are that's uh creating all kinds of terrible things in our world. And that's what I, I'm trying to change. Well, IFS is very, very good. And, and I, I, I personally think, particularly since you brought out a book with the title No Bad Parts, it's very good at depathologizing people. Um, and, and, and that, if you like, could be the heart of its beautiful gift. In, in alternative education, A.S. Neil, who started Summerhill School in the UK, insisted that children were good when they were born and it was their parents that screwed them up. And uh, this goes against all educational ideas about improving people, about modeling them and molding them into an ideal citizen or an ideal workforce member, whatever, or, or a, a moral being, you know, if you take character education, what it's trying to do. So um, it, it you know, we we need we need one could suggest to get to, to get a break. You know, cut cut it out all of that kind of modelling of others because if if as you're talking about the self is already perfect, the self is already in place as a healing positive force. It doesn't need modification. It needs to be allowed to emerge, and and therefore not just the parts need to get out of the way. The world and its it, it, its erroneous concepts that force need to get out of the way. So this brings me to a question about the self, about IFS. I don't know what it brings me to in respect of it, but I'm interested in your, your understanding of consent and the self. What do you mean? Uh, indeed. Um, and, and as well, this, this relates to the, 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 the way IFS uh, has to be in the world. Uh, and, and my big interest in IFS as self-determined, in other words, for people who don't have money, how do they, how do they access this, this quick, useful, effective method to access their self, right? How do they do those processes? How do they become more self-led uh, if they can't afford a therapist? So it's a sort of a self-determined version of what you've brought to the world. Um, yeah. And so therefore, so in that sense, there is this big issue of consent of oneself to allow oneself to heal, not needing the support or the consent of a therapist mm -hmm. to get permission to heal. It's much more about how do we, it's not just about how do we access self, it's about how do we access the idea of consent? Because that's a new concept for this world. Just like self is a sort of relatively speaking new concept. Yeah. Do you, know, do you understand what I mean? I got distracted because my phone was ringing. So maybe you start over with that one. Okay. Well, that's probably no bad thing. Okay. So consent in that you have a model which is premised on unburdening, which is the sort of the key to getting lighter, getting more self led, right? Mm -hmm. It's premised on the idea that you need a therapist. No. So there in that no is a very interesting area. It's a very interesting issue, which is mm -hmm. how do people unburden, as you put it, safely, because I, I do appreciate that for some people they may need support. But in general, how do people unburden safely um, without needing a therapist? And, you know, you and I have, have briefly talked about various things and you've mentioned there are things in the works or this is of great interest to you. 
Yeah. And, and you mentioned earlier about, you know, stadium or online mass healing for, you know, get people mm. getting towards self-leadership. Um, but the key thing in all of this, I would suggest, and I'm asking what you think of the possibility that the key thing would be consent. It's not just consent within oneself and with one's parts to get out of the way or to unburden it's not just consent that we trust or we might trust a therapist to help us and to guide us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also consent that we are given consent or we get consent or we take consent from the world to say, no, I will heal. I will be a healed version of what a human being is. And I will not continue through, through my life as this sort of handicapped half version that's not accessing self-leadership. Um, cons consent to be oneself comes from many different areas and people don't know how to give consent, take consent. Do they? Well, uh, it's a little more complicated because there are parts who will say, I've had enough of this, this life, the way um, I'm living and I've got to change and uh, I'm saying I'm, I'm taking consent to do that. And those parts typically are not uh, responded well to by other parts who aren't so on board with the whole project. And that'll create polarizations inside. Now, it's different if, if it comes from self and self says, you know, it's time to really start to do some work on this. But the whole concept of willpower in our culture has been a big problem because it generally means getting these manager parts to, to sit on the parts that are causing you trouble in your life and exile them as well as the other exiles. And so I'm very careful about uh, not being a big advocate of, of consent at that, in that way. That sounds like force. Um, oh, coercion. Yeah. Say it again. That sounds like coercion. That the well, managers coerce because they yes. sit them. Yes, it is. And but they would say the kind of things that you're saying, like enough is enough. I, I want to have a life. I'm going to take over my life and and uh, and change. Well, that's something I learned from IFS. That doesn't work. Right. But at the level of the saying. internal person. But there's a bigger issue here about consent, which is that, you know, take, take schools, for example. Schools were set up to create workforces that serve the rich and the elite who have factories, right? Or right. they need fodder for armies and so on. That's why schools were generated. Uh, that is not the world, people in, with power, whoever it might be, consenting that people become their best self. Is it? They don't want that. They, they want a certain type of person. What you're talking about with IFS is you're talking about a revolution at the level of consent yeah. that people can flourish and emerge as the person that they were meant to be, which, of course, as, as we might suggest, is a beautiful version, right? Mm -hmm. That's very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it challenges the existing paradigm for sure. Yeah. Changes the world. Mm -hmm. It does change the world. And do you have any understanding or idea in what direction that goes, what world it becomes? I don't have a totally clear vision. I'm, I mean, my I've never been able to see much past the headlights in terms of this whole journey. And I'm just kind of following the, the larger picture of just bringing more self to the planet with the assumption that like when I'm I've worked with many clients where when you get in there in the beginning it looks totally hopeless because there's so many polarizations there's no self available there's so much exiling and then you just start to convince these parts to open a little space and self starts to manifest a little bit and things can change very quickly and to extend that analogy to the planet, that's what drives me, is this belief that if we can just bring more self without 
anything else without having to to get certain people on board or anything. Just bring more of this energy to the planet that that can happen quickly too. And, you know, I'm so almost 73 and uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, there are some deadlines that we're facing. Yeah. There are, and that's 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 why when I was talking with this person yesterday about IFS and climate change, the the key interest in IFS, if you like, is is its uh, its velocity. Um, that's an Italian word. It's 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 speed, yeah. the speed with which it can operate. But there's something. It strikes me that maybe it's it's right to to mention something to you, which is why why was I so drawn to IFS when I first saw it? Because I'll tell you why. In two thousand and three probably something like 2002, three, I can't remember exactly. I just remember other dates. Um, I was walking along the Brompton Road in London in a lunch break from this work that I was doing in, a, in an office. And I had this vision of the world to come and it blew me, blew me away. I couldn't believe it. And I'll tell you what it was. There weren't, alas, if you like, if the vision has any veracity, who knows? There weren't that many people and they were wearing funny clothes. It was not today's fashion, shall we say. But the thing that was so striking was that those were people who were so incredibly good. They were so incredibly pure and kind and balanced. I mean, you know, it, it, it was just nothing I'd ever encountered before in terms of how people can be. But it gave me this sense that that could be the future. And erroneously, I, I said, oh, when's this going to happen then? And I got, you know, my head made up a date of 2013. And I couldn't help but think, so far into the future, that's crazy. Let's have it now. 2013 came and went. And I thought, OK, well, my head made up a new date. 2018, I thought, oh, we've got to wait so long. Well, I don't actually think it, it's likely to happen in, in our lifetimes, yours or mine. However, when I encountered IFS, I recognised the possibility that this vision on the Brompton Road could occur in the future. And that blew me away because I thought now I can see that that, that thing that I encountered, that, that those wonderful people, that wonderful world in terms of how people are, can't talk about how nature's going to be, that was possible. And I see it happening through IFS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think... Uh... IFS isn't the only source of it, but it's one, and uh, it's exciting for me to encounter people who get that vision as deeply as you just described. Well, I, I think got it, I got it. Uh, I'd say thirty-five years ago, uh, and I was still in my thirties, and I, I thought, this is amazing. This could really change it all. I hope the person who comes along who could make it happen because I'm just a little kid. Nobody's going to listen to me. And I'm still waiting for that person, so. It, it's not, I, IFS is not going to be responsible for it, but it may help a lot. It's that that thing can occur is is the fundamental. Ah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you say, it could be other pathways. And it, it's obvious that anybody that says, oh, no, IFS is the only way is, is just talking rubbish. That's not true. Yeah. IFS is a, an effective method for this thing that we've seen is possible to right. realize itself, shall we say. That's the way I see it, exactly. That's right. Yeah. One of, one of many effective methods. 